Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys, where we are going to have just a few observations from the very beginning of this brand new season. We're going to be focusing on some of those players who really impressed, but maybe still gone under the radar just a little. And we're also going to be talking about Chaffee's treatment of the veteran players, some of the big decisions that he's made. That is always a hot topic and it is all coming up for you today. Big, big discussion. So come on, and let's do it. But I do first of all want to begin by talking about Eric Garcia. And this is a really interesting name I feel to be kicking off the video here today with because he has played every single minute of our opening three La Liga games. He is the only player, along with Robert Lewandowski, to have done that outfield player at Barca. And I think, to be fair... He's really impressed Chaffee. I think the way that he's gone about his game in the opening matches of the season, he has done very well. And I think he's needed to. Because to be fair, coming into this season, given the signings that we'd made at centre-back, you know, bringing in Andreas Christensen, experienced player as well there, Jules Kunde, the incredible talent and the quality that he has, I think most of us were feeling as though Eric Garcia, he's got a bit of a problem. He is going to fall down the pack in order. He's going to be used as a rotational player, back up on option but to be fair he's really hit back and he's needed to do that I think the players that have come in have given him an extra push really made him realize he's gonna have to perform at a really high level to stay in this team to be involved in this team and that is what we've seen because I think you're looking at the game against Vidalid at the weekend that was probably the outstanding performance there at centre-back his range of passing you have to say it is outrageous for a centre-back to have that much ability that much technical quality on the ball honestly guys it's kind of unheard of. He is a player there who is unique in that area and a Barca of course building out the back being able to make those passes it is absolutely key and he has been brilliant in that area. I think in these opening games as well we have seen Eric Garcia I feel be a bit more aggressive you know impose himself on games and opposition attackers a little bit more and I think he needs to do that he needs to certainly be more of a physical presence there if he's going to play at centre back and I do want to say guys there's going to be bigger tests to come you know there's going to be a lot more standard in the way of Eric Garcia as the season goes on he's going to be put under more pressure defensively and he's going to have plenty of questions asked of him that he will need to answer but I do just think we have to be patient with him I think at times Eric Garcia is somebody who can be a little bit of a scapegoat I think he can be harshly treated at times because you have to remember he is still only 21 years old and that for a centre-back that's nothing. That is incredibly young there. There's so much time for him to improve, so much time there to actually develop and grow as a player and a person. And I just hope he can keep this going. Good start to the season, very assured, flying under the radar. That suits him fine, but let's keep it going now. And it's a big season, a really exciting one. For Eric Garcia. Another player, though, that I really do want to talk about once again. We have spoken about him on a number of occasions already this season. It is Mark andre Ter Stegen and the form that he seems to be recovering. And indeed, the way that he started this campaign, he looks very, very impressive. And I actually want to take a look here at the words of Xavi after the game against Lid. When Ter Stegen kept under the clean sheet, he seems really proud and determined to add as many of those as he possibly can this season. And Chavi he said he started very well and it was really intriguing I feel that he said he needed a vacation this summer he needed that breakaway and that time to unwind he said he knows what he failed to do last year he said he is very self-critical he's demanding of himself and he said he has been working with the goalkeeping coach at Barca de la Fuente and Chavi said I've got no doubts about him I have full confidence in Testec and he's a leader and he's been very very good in these first three games and I think that's interesting because particularly they're thinking about that rest that he's had over the summer it has been rare for Ter Stegen to have that amount of time off and it's actually being said right now in the Catalan media that Ter Stegen in that breakaway he was actually able to fully recover from some of the physical problems that he'd been dealing with for at least the past season he's done a lot of strength training apparently he now feels a lot more comfortable in the shape that he's in because I think at times last season he just didn't look right it wasn't just about the performances it wasn't just about the mistakes that he was making he didn't look 
look good. He didn't look mobile and flexible as you need to be as a goalkeeper. But this season, he looks good. He looks fresh. And I think it's not just that either. It's not just about the physical side. It's also mentally too. And I think over the summer, Tash Stegen needed that time to go away, to have a mental reset, and almost to go back to basics. Because we know about the quality that he has. We know he can be a top goalkeeper. He can be right up there with the very best. Then it is a case here of just finding that level again, making sure here that you recapture the all-important word in football, confidence. Because that is something that can make or break your game even more so as a goalkeeper. You're the last line of defence. You are the one who's ultimately in charge at the very end of it all, if a goal happens or if it doesn't. And if your confidence isn't there, you really are going to be affected. And I think there's always been a case with Ter Stegen, and to be honest, goalkeepers in general, that they're almost only as good at times as the defence in front of them. And that that defence in front of them and the players that they have to rely on, they're kind of going to dictate how confident you are. And if you've got nothing there, if you're not confident in the players that you've got ahead of you, of course, you're not going to feel as good. And I think so far from Tash Stegen, it's early days, like I say, plenty of the season still to go, but we've seen key saves. We've seen big clutch moments from him again. He looks really motivated. He's been very vocal. He's even been wearing the captain's armband there against Real Sociedad. And I just want to see this continue. He is a good goalkeeper. We know what he can be. We know what he can do. And let's keep it going now. The fire is burning. The motivation is there for him. And he has all of the quality needed to succeed. And especially now, with the improvements we've made defensively. However, there are plenty of players right now in this Barcelona team who haven't been out there this season, who haven't been in Xavi's plans. And I want to talk here about the veterans at Barca. Because ever since Xavi took over as the Barcelona coach, it's probably been the hottest topic of all. How is he going to handle the veterans? How is he going to handle the big personalities at the club that many coaches, they haven't been able to? They haven't been able to manage and control that dressing room. And let's not forget as well, these are often players players that Chaffee's played with, that he's played alongside, often ones that are even his friends. Is Chaffee going to be able to manage them? Now, even heading into this season, I think there were still doubts. I think many people still doubted whether Chaffee had what it took to actually stand up to these players and say, OK, I'm the one in charge now. I'm not your friend. I'm not your teammate. I'm the boss. And I think we've all been sitting and waiting for evidence here that Chaffee does have what it takes. And I think now... We are seeing it. Because you look, first of all, at Gerard Piquet. We heard rumours during the summer that Xavi had already told Piquet that he wasn't counting on him. Even in the summer, you're not in my plans. You are not going to be in the team this season. And he made that very, very clear. But even then, there was doubts that when the season started, when Piquet was still there, when he was still available to play, would Xavi follow up on that? Would he actually leave him out of his team? Well... Three games into the season that we are in La Liga, three games for Barca, zero minutes for Gerard Piquet. And that's nothing. No minutes at all. He hasn't stepped foot onto the field this season. And that's a statement. And I think that is simply Xavi now having the options available to him at centre-back because we've added this summer. He can now say... I've got other options. I have now players in that area that I can take us forward with, that I can take us on and look to the future. It's not just about looking back. It's not just being appreciative of what has worked in the past, but it's what can work going forward. And I think even more significantly than that, even more than PK, it's what's happening with Alba. That's the one for me that really sends out a message. Because personally for me, coming into the season... I didn't see it coming. I have to be honest and say I did not think this was going to happen because this is a decision that Xavi has made here to almost cast aside Jordi Alba overnight. And it's not as though at this point that Xavi has his left-back signing. It's not as though he's been able to bring in another player in that area. He's not as though he had an experienced player waiting in the wings. Xavi, to make this call here, to move on from Alba, has had to put so much faith, had to be really bold and say, OK, 18-year-old Alejandro Balde, you've got my confidence. And that's what he's done in a really key opening part of the season. Because against Rio, Xavi lost it. I think with what he saw from Jordi Alba, that was the final straw. He absolutely snapped. Because from what we've heard in the media, Xavi was very angry at the mistakes that Alba had made against Rio. He wasn't happy, of course, with the performance that he was putting in. But it was more than that. 
it was about the lack of intensity. Because Alba there was seen jogging back to his position after losing the ball, after the ball had been turned over, when Raya were counter-attacking, and Alba there could barely break into a sprint. Now, bear in mind, guys, this is the first game of the new season. That's when you should be full of life, full of energy, going at it like crazy to get the team the win... But Alba there jogging around the field. And Xavi, I feel, felt as though, no, I'm not having that. I'm not accepting that. And what he's done here is not only move Alba aside, not only put PK on the bench and not played him for a single minute, but he has sent out a message, not just to those players, but to every single member of this squad. This is a new season now. He's had a summer transfer window. He's brought in players that he wanted, that he requested, and now he has the tools to say, right, this is my team. I'm choosing the team. I'm getting what I want, and you have to perform if you're going to stay there. And that's a message to everybody. You have got to be at your level, your best level to stay in the team, because if you lose your place, if you drop your guard, if you lose that intensity, who knows when you're going to get it back? Because Jordi Alba there probably thought, oh, well, you know, I didn't play well against Rio. Maybe Chavi here is going to drop me for the next game, but I'll be back in. You know, I know who I am. I know my profile. I know that I'm a big character in this dressing room. I know that I'll be back in that team. But no, once you you're out and once you lose that spot and somebody comes in like Balde, fresh, energetic, youthful there, talented, and he shows what he can do, well, you're not coming back in. You have lost that chance now and you need to work so, so hard to get it back. And that's the way that it should be. At any top club in the world, any club who aspires to be at the very top of the game, you've got to have that motivation. You've got to have that drive within you and that intensity in your play. And not just in one game, not just in the big games, but every single game, every week without fail. And that's what we have to demand. That's what Xavi has to keep going now throughout the season. It's no good just doing it now and forgetting about it later, letting everything go back to how it used to be. We started well. We sent out messages. We started now to command this dressing room. So let's follow that through. Let's keep this going for the season. Have that competition for places firing on all cylinders. And let's have a great year. Let's have a campaign that we can celebrate. And please, guys, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on what you've seen from Xavi in the season so far. Some of the big decisions, the big calls that he's been making. What do you agree with? What do you think maybe he still has to do as the season goes on? And let me know as all well your thoughts on the performances of Eric Garcia, of Mark andre Ter Stegen, And of course, there's plenty others as well who've been pressed in these opening stages. We're going to be talking plenty, plenty more in the build-up to Barca against Sevilla. I will see you soon, guys, of course, with more videos to come. Thank you for tuning in today and for all of your support. Absolutely incredible. I will see you then. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Basa.